One too many opportunities for the hopes and the dreams to be dashed, I've come to the conclusion you're better off probably not having the hopes and the dreams to begin with. But I don't even think that a cynic like me could keep the hopes and dreams at bay if I were Mary Magdalene. Jesus came into her life and freed her from a bondage that I don't even want to think about. Possessed by seven demons. From that moment, she spent the remainder of her time with Jesus, serving him and supporting him in his ministry. And during those years, she would have seen with her own eyes miracle after miracle. Words of real life would have poured into her ear day after day from the source of all light. Dream big, Mary. In Jesus, who you know is the Christ, who is the Lord, who is God, hope is alive. There's no room for cynicism. And then in a matter of a couple of short days, Jesus was betrayed. He stood trials. He was beaten. And he was executed. Hopes. Poof. Dreams dashed. Jesus' death for Mary must have been an absolute gut punch. But that's kind of what death does. It's the ultimate, isn't it? Punch right in the gut. Those of us who've experienced, and we all have, the loss of a loved one, we know that death is the thing that ends all the hopes and dreams that we have associated with that loved one. The dream of spending forever together. Of taking a vacation to Europe each and every year, or of just sitting on the patio and enjoying sunset after sunset, death ends all of it. It's kind of the reason for cynicism at all, isn't it? I mean, the reality is the reality. We all know where we're going and where we're going to end up, and so it's very easy to come to the conclusion of what's the point of any of it, really, that we do here. Read Ecclesiastes. A more cynical book about the things of life cannot be written than what Solomon wrote there. Death as... The final reality, I think, makes me justified in my cynicism. And I wouldn't blame Mary if she felt that way Sunday morning. We all know how she walked to the grave. Listless purposeless, numbing thoughts just flopping around in the head, grasping nothing at all. I wonder if she 
realized the shaking under her feet was an earthquake or if maybe she thought it was just her wobbling through life. Her Lord was dead. But then an angel perched on a stone at once sealed her Lord's tomb. And words that floated through the air into her ear, he's risen. Now go and tell. Hope, it's a lie. Dreams bigger than any dream before. Cynicism squashed. She wasn't going to walk to go tell the disciples, no. He was more like Edwin Moses or Usain Bolt right out of the starting block. She ran until she bumped right into her living hope. Greetings, Mary. Greetings indeed. Brothers and sisters, I get that there's reasons to be cynical. To be cynical about the state of the world, about the price of food, about the prospects of your portfolio. But not today. Today is a day where hope is alive, where dreams are made real. For the one once dead is now alive forever and ever. Greeting you with the good news of what this day means. Your life is filled with hope and purpose. Your life is filled with life itself. You have the greatest of all news to treasure, to ponder, to share. He is risen. He's risen indeed. We hear the words that Matthew records of that Sunday morning, what a difference that made for Mary and the women. Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So far, the reading. 